Energy diagrams. Today we're going to learn about energy diagrams and how they relate to other topics we've talked about so far in our thermochemistry unit. In thermochemistry, we know that chemical reactions, heat is typically absorbed or evolved, released or absorbed. Energy can come in different forms. We just think about things as getting hot, but we, if we think about a firecracker going off, we often see uh, heat, light, electrical, even nuclear. So chemical energy is store, uh, stored in all chemical substances. Bond making and bond breaking is important, and the energy is stored in bonds and chemical reactions. So energy is either, either, either absorbed when bonds are broken, or it's released when bonds are formed. So it's either absorbed when bonds are broken or released when the bonds are formed. Uh, the law of conservation of energy is that energy is never created or destroyed, it's only transferred. So a summary about the difference in exothermic and endothermic reactions. In exothermic reactions, energy is evolved, and in exothermic reaction, there's a net, net release of heat energy to the surroundings. And because of that net release of energy to the surroundings, the temperature of the surroundings increases and the reaction mixture feels warm. Now, if we compare that to endothermic reactions, where energy is absorbed, there's a net absorption of heat energy from the surroundings. Heat goes from the surroundings from the warmer system to the cooler system. So the temperature of the surroundings drop as energy goes from the surroundings into the system. And because of this, the reaction mixture feels cold. So examples of endothermic and exothermic reactions. Exothermic reactions, we see a lot of these. Combustion is exothermic. Respiration, our breathing, when we breathe, we're breaking down carbohydrates. That's an exothermic reaction. Neutralization is an exothermic reaction. That's when you mix acids and bases together. Anytime you dissolve an acid, that's an exothermic reaction. Dissolving alkalis, which are bases, is exothermic. The process of rust, we saw that in one of the problems we did previously, is an exothermic reaction. Anytime the metals oxidize, and also nuclear processes are ex exothermic. Endothermic uh, reactions, why does that leave? Well, thermal decomposition, dissolving of some ionic salts in water, like ammonium, chloride, potassium nitrate, and copper sulfate. Uh, sulfate are examples. Photosynthesis is endothermic. And the action of, of, of light on silver bromide is another example of endothermic reactions. As you can see, most reactions that we know and we talk about are exothermic. Now, enthalpy change. What is enthalpy change? Enthalpy change, which we recognize, this is really the same thing as Q. It's the overall change in energy during reaction and is known as the enthalpy change or delta H of the reaction. The unit for enthalpy change is kilojoules per mole. So when we're relating it to reaction, we express it in terms of kilojoules per mole. If we're just talking about the term for energy, it's going to be kilojoules, and that's what we often relate to with the Q. An exothermic reaction has a negative, negative enthalpy change, indicating more energy is lost than it gained from the reaction. On the other hand, remember that's exothermic, that's a negative delta H. On the other hand, an endothermic reaction has a positive enthalpy change, indicating more energy is gained than is lost in the reaction. Remember that is thus a positive delta H. Let's continue. So the, the reaction, I'm sorry, the formula we're going to use for this is the energy of the reaction, the delta H of the reaction, is going to be equal to delta uh, energy of the products minus energy of the reactants. One way to remember this is this is going to be alphabetical. P becomes before R in the alphabet. So it's always going to be products minus reactants. So let's look at a couple of these. And then another thing we're going to look, look for is something called activation energy. In a reaction, the reactant molecules must be able to overcome that initial barrier before they can turn to products. And this barrier is known as the activation energy, which we'll abbreviate as E with a sub A. Activation energy is defined as a minimum amount of energy required to initiate or start a chemical reaction. Reactions with high activation energy will not occur spontaneously and may require heat or addition of a catalyst to initiate a chemical reaction. 
So an exothermic reaction. Now what is an exothermic reaction? Now this would be an example of an exothermic diagram. So let's label the different parts of this. Now there's four things we want to be able to label in any of these diagrams. We want to be able to say what is the energy of the reactants, what is the energy of the products, what is the activation energy, and what is the delta H of the reaction. Now if you look at this at the very beginning, this, these will always be your reactants. These will always be your products. The area from reactants to the top of the hump is your activation energy. That's E sub A. I'm having a hard time writing that. Sorry. Uh, and then the difference in these two, which you see represented by this arrow, is your delta H. Now for this one, it would be a negative delta H value. delta H here. Hopefully you have some better luck. Now here, here I have all these things typed out for us. So there we have our reactants. Here we have our products. There we have our activation energy, which we abbreviate EA. And then here we have our negative delta H of this reaction. This is our exothermic reaction. Now a couple things. Let's go back to this exothermic reaction for a second. I want to point out well, one thing about the exothermic reaction, it has an overall energy loss to the environment. So this energy change right here, this goes into the environment. And for this, any act exothermic reaction, the energy of the products is always going to be lower than the energy of the reactant. So this will always appear lower. Now let's look at an endothermic reaction. In an endothermic reaction, like you label the same thing, label reactants, label products, label the activation energy and label the delta H of the reaction and give me the sign of that. So let's go through those. Okay, first we have the reactants always on the left. Then we have the products always on the right. Then we have the energy of activation. You see it's much higher this time because this is what we call an endothermic reaction. One way to remember this, one endothermic reaction, your products are always of higher energy. And you also means you need to put more energy in to get this endothermic reaction going. We've got one thing left to label, and that's our delta H of the reaction. What is the sign of this reaction? Hopefully you recognize this as a positive delta H. Okay, the last thing I want to do is I'd like you to be able to identify these four things on this. Now, you see reactants and products are already labeled. What I'd like you, you to do is, it be, is to be able to give me a numerical value. A numerical value for the energy of the reactants a numerical value for the energy of the products, as well as the activated, the activation energy, not the activated complex, which you see, see labeled there, and also the delta H of the reaction. So let's see if you can label those four things. Okay, hopefully for the energy of the reactants, you put 150, so we see it goes up to this 150 mark. So the energy of the reactants is going to be 150. The energy of the products we see is quite a bit lower. Energy of the products is going to be 50, and all these are kilojoules. Next, what is the delta H of the reaction? For this, you'd go 50 minus 100, always products minus reactants, so that'd be minus 100 kilojoules. And there's one last value. What is the activation energy of this reaction? That would be the area for the reactants to the top of the hill. So that would just be this small area, which was represented by the letter A. If you look at that, that would be, for this reaction, 50 kilojoules. So the activation energy for this reaction is 50 kilojoules. So this is, once again, an exothermic reaction because we have a negative delta H of 100 kilojoules. And also, you can recognize that because the energy of the products is lower than the energy of the reactants. So that's, uh, all right, let's look at a different type of reaction. Okay, in this reaction, I'd like you to do the same thing. Give me the energy of the reactants, the energy of the products, the delta H of the reaction, and the energy of the activation. We have these four values. See so if you can get all of those down right now. You might want to hit pause. Hopefully, for the energy of the reactants, you, which you, these are your reactants right here. You put 80 kilojoules. And then we have the energy of the products. The products are right here. So if the energy of the products, you put a 160 kilojoules. Next, we have the delta H, the reaction. For that, we're going to go products. So it's going to be 160 minus reactants, which is 80. 160 minus 80 would give us 80 kilojoules. So 
Sorry, my palms are riding with this. <laughs> 80 kilojoules. And that is a positive value. You can write the positive to be emphatic. That indicates this is an endothermic reaction because we have a positive 80 kilojoules. Last, what is the energy of activation? Remember, for energy of activation, for endothermic reaction, it's going to be rather large. We're going to go from the 80 to the top of this hill. So that's going to be a rather large value. It's going to go from there to there. So it's going to go from 80 to 240. So the energy of activation for this one is going to be 160 kilojoules. 160 kilojoules. And so that's our last slide. Hopefully you notice a couple things. The energy profile diagram is just energy against time where you have your reactants and products. And it shows us a, a little thing, uh, some inter information about the energy the reactants possess, the products possess, the, the energy of activation, and also the uh, delta H of the reaction, which would indicate whether the reaction is endothermic or exothermic. That's it. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.